Uh, good morning friends. Today we will see our fifth unit plate and cell elements. So to analyze the problems like slabs, then plates, folded plates or any problem which involves the continuous surfaces then we have to use plate elements or if it is a curved structure then we have to use the cell elements. Now first we will see the plate elements. So plate bending element or plate bending problem. Now here whenever we consider a plate so there is always a two way bending. So in case of plate two-way bending occurs two-way bending occurs and the degree of freedom therefore the degree of freedom are basically three per node so which are W that is vertical deflection theta x and theta y. So there are three degrees of freedom per node. So for plate element generally we consider four basic nodes, primary nodes. Then this W is a primary primary degree of freedom theta x, theta y, these are the derived degrees of freedom. Derived degrees of freedom. So before we start the formulation for plate element, formulation for stiffness matrix, element stiffness matrix of a plate element, so we will see the basic fundamentals, basic theories of plate. So the classical theories of plate bending. So actually you know this because you have already learning or maybe gone through the theory of plate and cell. That is a separate course. Now classical, so I just repeat whatever is required from finite element point of view. Classical theories of plate bending, classical theories of plate bending. Now there are two types of theories. So that is uh, A thin and thick plate theory. Thin and thick plate theory. That is, if if the thickness of plate is less than or equal to least lateral dimension, least lateral dimension divided by ten. If the thickness of plate is less than or equal to least lateral dimension divided by 10 then this is called small thin plate theory then we have to use thin plate theory and if thickness is greater than this least lateral dimension divided by 10 then this is thick plate theory and we have to use thick plate theory. So depending upon the thickness of plate, if it is less than or equal to less lateral dimension divided by 10, then thin plate theory is to be used. If thickness is greater than least lateral dimension of plate divided by 10, then we have to use thick plate theory. And the second type is small 
and large deflection theory small and large deflection theory now here see if if deflection is less than or equal to t by 10 if deflection is less than or equal to t by 10 then we use small deflection theory small deflection theory and if this is greater than t by 10 then we have to use large deflection theory if the deflection is less than or equal to the thickness of plate divided by 10 then it becomes small deflection theory if it is greater than thickness of plate divided by 10 then we have to use the large deflection theory now for we are going to see the formulation for thin plates with small deflection theory so we are going to see only thin plates with small deflection theory and the Kirchhoff's classical flat theory we are going to use for this formulation. Now thin plate if there is a small deflection where the membrane stresses the deflection is small the plate is thin plate and deflection is small then membrane stresses are very small as compared to the bending stresses and can be neglected. So we have to now the that means the membrane or in plane analysis and bending analysis can be uncoupled. So that is in case of small deflection theory, in case of small deflection theory, the membrane stresses, the membrane stresses are very small as compared to bending stresses bending stresses therefore therefore the membrane and bending analysis can be uncoupled therefore membrane or we can say in plane and bending analysis can be uncoupled or we can do the separately bending analysis if it is a large deflection theory then the coupling occurs that means we have to analyze flat by considering both in plane and the bending analysis together. Then for formulation of thin plates the Kirchhoff's theory is used. Kirchhoff's classical theory of plate. Kirchhoff's theory. So, if it is a thin plate, then we have to make use of Kirchhoff's theory. You might be knowing the assumptions. Assumptions in Kirchhoff's theory. The first assumption is plane cross section. Plane cross section normal to mid surface normal to 
mid surface before bending before bending remains remains plane after bending so plane shape plane cross section normal to mid surface of a plate before bending remains plane after bending so what is the meaning of this that is that is shear stresses tau x z and tau y z equal to zero means shear stresses shear stresses in z plane equal to zero so we can consider shear stresses equal to zero in z plane now the second assumption so only the main assumptions we are going to see so second assumption is the normal stress perpendicular to plane of plate normal stress normal stress perpendicular to plane of plate normal stress perpendicular to plane of plate equal to zero that is that is sigma z equal to zero that is sigma z is equal to zero so these are the two main assumptions that we are going to consider in plate bending analysis or in the formulation finite element formulation of a plate now let's consider a plate of thickness t let's consider a plate of thickness t suppose So this is a plate of thickness T. Then the mid surface is this. This is a mid surface of plate. this dotted line indicates mid surface then the axis system considered is this is x axis this is z axis and this is y axis so vertical downward z axis is to be considered as positive so this is the origin now here the in z direction we have to consider the vertical displacement then x direction and y direction so this is theta x about x direction and theta y so the basically the axis system is like this this is w and this is theta x and this is theta y actually this is in this direction there will be mx there will be my so that double arrow represents mx and my so this is the 
access system that we have to follow. So what the U and V, these are the displacements considered for membrane analysis or we can say membrane strengths and W is considered for bending strength. Then also you might be knowing the basic equations that we know that in case of plate bending, we know that what is u? u equal to this is minus z dia bar w by dia bar x and v equal to minus z dia bar w by dia bar y. From these expressions, we can derive the strain displacement relations. Strain displacement. relations. So that is epsilon x equal to dia bar u by dia bar x. We calculate strain in x direction. So this gives us minus z dia bar w by dia bar x square. And epsilon y equal to dia bar v by dia bar y is gives us minus z dia bar square w by dia bar y square and shear strain gamma xy equal to dia bar u by dia bar y plus dia bar v by dia bar x so this is minus z twice dia bar square w by dia bar x dia bar y so these are the strain displacement relations we can work on these strains by using these expressions then we should know the stresses stress strain relations also the stress strain relations are given by so in matrix form directly i will write down sigma x sigma y tau xy is equal to this is e divided by 1 minus nu square, nu is the Poisson's ratio and here we get nu and 1, 0, 1, nu, 0 and 0, 0, 1 minus nu upon 2, 1 minus nu upon 2 and epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y. So the stress strain relationships, this we know. In some symbolic form, we may write down this as B into the strain. So now from this, these actually the strains, these stresses do rise to bending moments. And now we have to see how to find out these bending moments. Now to calculate the bending moments, now say so we will stop here and the next video we will prepare and we will continue from here onwards.